This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Alright folks, happy 2021! Here's to a new and hopefully slightly better year than the previous one. I'm hoping to work hard to make sure that the year is better, at least for me and for everyone who I'm close to, so... I encourage everyone to do the same, but it's time for the first stream of 2021! We're continuing Fruit of Grisea today. Uh, <laughs> boy howdy, this is a very strange game, very different from what I usually play. <laughs> and wow, I just want to say that everyone in this game is, like, super weird. And kind of off-putting in, in, <laughs> in a way. We've got the main character who is quite the misogynist. Wait. Wait, Marty, what does it say I'm playing? Oh, oh. Oh, okay, so I... Yeah. I'll, I'll do that later, Marty. But it is... I think that it is saying... Yeah, yeah. Twitch is saying I right now I am playing Fruit of Grisea, but I haven't updated my panels yet. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, our cast of characters. We've got the main character, Yuji, who is kind of a misogynist and also a little bit creepy. We have the principal, who is like, oh, someone's trying to stab you? Sounds like a problem that you need to figure out. I'm not going to do anything for. We've got, like, our legal guardian, who is threatening to kill us if we don't do something that she wants us to do. Which is, um, very strange. We have, uh, Michiru, who is trying hard to act like a tsundere, which, like, why would you do that? But she has great facial expressions. We have Yumiko, who literally tried to murder us several times, and is just all in all a very sour person. We have Makina, who is, like, an eight-year-old girl, but apparently she's 14, but no, she's an eight-year-old girl. We have Amine, who is exactly the kind of wayward woman the Bible warns us to stay away from, and then we have Sachi. Sachi's the real winner here. <laughs> What's up, Nick? <laughs> All right, we're going to continue. Um, I must have had the auto save. Hang on. Where are the hot keys? Quick load is F2. All right. Um Oh, auto. There we go. There it is. We are loading this save. I do have saves. I didn't save Marty, but I did do an auto save. So we're back. <laughs> no need to panic. That was a teaching of my masters. At that time, I was accustomed to reading while shut up in a closet or a dark room, so those words felt a bit refreshing. Uh, what words are you talking about? Oh, read books in a well-lit area. That's it. Of course, it's not like I'm worried about obeying the teachings of a woman who's already dead and I'm still not good with direct sunlight. But here I am searching for a bright place of a book at hand anyway. Aren't I adorable? Not, not really, Yuji. Not really. No reason to wander around looking for a sunny place in this shitty heat. Stepping away from the air-conditioned school building, I unfold the school's admissions guide pamphlet. On the coded, free-fold brochure, there's a bird's-eye view illustration of the campus, with a mark to the south of the schoolhouse anno annotated, the planned site of the library construction. <laughs> the master vein, and our dude is a jerk-faced assassin? Uh, I don't know if he's an assassin, or a secret agent, or... I, I don't really know yet. <laughs> he's definitely doing some shady business, though. Plan site, meaning there isn't a library yet, I guess. There's only six people here! You don't need, really need a library for just six people. Although there is something library-esque on the second floor of the school building. The collection only holds around 200 books. That's like the reference room in Clonade. You can apply to have a book stocked if you're after one in particular, and apparently a bookmobile replaces the existing collection every once in a while. But it doesn't seem like it's being used that heavily. In other words, there's no reason to go out of my way to borrow the key to use it. I brought my own books, and there are plenty of well-lit areas besides the library. Hmm? While casually looking over the pamphlet, I find the words, Rose Garden. This is definitely our principal's doing. We have a rose garden in the school? <laughs> uh, 
が先輩たちが自分で育てたバラを新入生の胸に添えるの。<笑> <laughs> I gotta say, one of my favorite parts about this visual novel thus far is just all of the weird effects that happen. <laughs> They're great. <laughs> <laughs> Or so I can easily imagine a certain woman who doesn't know how to act her age deluding herself. Pretty flowers might calm your mind, but they won't fill your belly. <laughs> He's practical, like me. But I still realize that there is a good reason that roses are, exist. They are cool. If you've got room to grow them, it would be better used for an edible plant, but telling her that would probably just make things unpleasant. I'll just have to remember to greet Principal Tachibana with a good day, One sama, the next time I see her. A rose garden, eh? I don't have any interest in edible inedible flowers, but I guess there would be a shade tree or two as well. Imagining myself reading under a tree surrounded by blooming roses brings a smirk to my face. Guided by these silly thoughts, I decide to head toward the Rose Garden for the first and only time. They call it a Rose Garden, but not a single one's in bloom. Well, they don't bloom all year round. Based on the map, this is definitely the right spot, and there's even a white arch that seems appropriate, but from what I can see, there aren't any roses in flower. Maybe the garden's still a work in progress, or perhaps they are cutting the buds during the summer. Well, not like I came to see roses in the first place, so whatever. Why are they in school in the summer? Oh boy, this game also has a lot of CGs. Oh, it's Machina, and apparently she's asleep <laughs> under a tree. <laughs> That was a surprise. I'm not going to jail. I wasn't expecting anyone else to be here. No, more importantly, what the heck is she doing? She's sleeping. I approach silently and touch Machina's neck in the area of her carotid artery. What? What kind of a person does that? She's got a pulse. Oh, he was checking if she was dead? Normally you check arms for pulses. On close inspection, she's breathing quietly, so I guess the wicked stepmother, Amine in this case, didn't feed her a poisoned apple. Pfft, this guy is so weird. She's sleeping? Wait, this fiend is a cat, I think? Oh my gosh, she's using a cat as a pillow. Oh, that's amazing. I want to do the cat route. I don't want to do the Machina route. A large cat is serving as the soundly sleeping Machina's pillow. I had taken it for a stuffed animal at first glance. I didn't even notice it. I thought that was just a pillow. It sure looks like a fluffy toy, but when I draw close, the stubby ears buried in its fur twitch like miniature radar antennas. My next question is, why sleep out here? Soon resolves itself. I see. It's definitely nice and cool here. Cats are knowledgeable about cool places. Or so they used to say. <laughs> why are we going to school during the summer? Have you ever heard of summer school? I have. I Oh, is that this, is this place just a giant summer school then? I still don't really know what this school is all about. <laughs> It's just like the weird school. Alright. As for Magana, I expect she was wandering around by herself as per usual, and then grew exhausted and collapsed into a sudden sleep on the spot. I watched the partially gnawed apple on Magana's chest rise and fall with her breathing. She fell asleep in the middle of eating, just like a baby. I mean, she is an eight-year-old. I notice that Machina's mouth is half open and dripping transparent drool. Not to mention her hair is a scruffy mess, the ribbon on her uniform is crooked, and she's wearing different socks on her left and right leg. What's with this girl? I don't know. Maybe she's not all that put together, maybe? As I look down upon her, Machina suddenly shall snuffles noisily. Heh. <laughs> <laughs> what a weirdo. It's been a while since the last time I laughed at a woman's sleeping face. Even as I'm filled with the desire to keep watching, discomfort at the peaceful atmosphere of this place also wells up within me. Yeah, don't watch her while she sleeps. That's weird. <laughs> oh, the cat's now looking at us. At that moment, I sense someone watching me and look over to find that Machina's pillow cat has woken and is staring up at me in surprise. <laughs> I don't think that was a real cat sound. Sorry to bother you. Go back to sleep. <laughs> I like how he's respectful to the cat, though. I leave them, taking care to avoid making noise, and sit down under a tree a little ways away. Phew! Wandering around as she pleases, then falling asleep in the nearest cool place when she gets tired. I see. She certainly does remind you of a cat. I'm envious. Persians, though, have those squished-in faces. <laughs> That was a cute cat. That's not sarcasm or anything. I'm genuinely envious of Machina. 
I'm sure that she brings that little pocket of naturally peaceful space with her wherever she goes. I think that's something worth envying, and it's probably very precious to her as well. Which might well be why she doesn't want to step outside this sanctuary of a school when she can avoid it. <laughs> no, watching girls sleep is not cute. It is actually quite creepy. <laughs> Inside this sanctuary that would crumble in a moment without the protection of others, the only time it wouldn't be creepy is if it's like, it's your baby that you're watching sleep. That's like, that's not creepy, obviously. But if it's like a random girl who's, I think she's technically, I think, our age, or just a little bit younger. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, you get, a, you get a fist in your face then. I wonder if the day will come when I too can sleep in that utterly defenseless way. Hmm? Turning toward the sound, I notice the fat white cat from before appearing from the direction of the thicket I just left. Rustling its way through the foliage on stubby legs, it stops suddenly when it spots me sitting under the shade of my tree. Glaring at me with sleepy looking eyes, it lets out a single disgruntled meow. That is very clearly someone just trying to meow. <laughs> my bad. After getting suddenly awoken in the middle of a pleasant nap, it's only natural. If I were pulled out of bed on a Sunday morning by some pushy religious solicitors, I'd sh sure I'd make a similar face. Wow. Although the fat cat doesn't seem to have accepted my apology, he snuffles roughly, and then he lumbers away from the place. As I'm watching the cat's dignified exit, the bushes start to rustle again. <laughs> yeah, without her pillow, she's probably going to wake up too. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's not hard to get, like, actual cat sounds. I hear the sound of a dim-witted creature waking and lazily stretching out its body. When I take a look, Machina's crouched on the ground on all fours, bending her back. She really is a cat in human form. Machina opens her mouth, holds down a yawn, and rubs roughly at the tears spilling out of the corner of her eyes. After a restless look around the area, she draws herself up off the ground. It's not like I'm doing anything I need to be ashamed of, but before I realize it, I've hidden myself from her. What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, I guess she doesn't really like us at this point. She's very shy, so maybe we don't want to scare her. After standing shock s stock still for a moment, Machina takes a bite from the apple in her hand and walks off briskly. Well, you don't have to use our cat for cat sounds. I'm sure if you can go to stock libraries, like stock sound libraries, and find cat noises. And where is she off to now? It doesn't look like she's got any particular destination in mind. Driven by an interest I find difficult to pin down, I decide to quietly follow Machina. Oh, now, he's, well, now we're stalking her. There's no regularity to Machina's actions. Just when I think she's walking straight towards something, she'll come to a sudden stop, look around restlessly, and then head off in a different direction. Probably because she knows you're following her and she's freaked out. Doesn't seem like she's lost or anything, so I suppose she's just moving wherever her whims take her. Unfortunately, that randomness makes it pretty tough to tail her. <laughs> It wouldn't be a serious problem if she noticed me, but if I just call out to her now, I have the feeling she'll scamper off again. I skillfully hide my presence and continue shadowing her movements. Yeah, this guy's creepy. Tailing a girl without her knowledge. Objectively speaking, I guess this would be stalking. Yes, it would. Just as I'm finally starting to get fed up with following Machina's directionless rambling, which resembles the random staggering of a sleepwalker more than anything else, the rare wandering monster in question comes to a sudden halt. What? <laughs> Her resting place is an area on the outskirts of the school courtyard, in front of an artificial cement pond of uncertain purpose. Okay then. Makina totters her way up to the pond, thrusts her hand uh, in the pocket of her skirt to retrieve some half-eaten white bread, and then she starts tearing off chunks to throw it in the water. Oh, she's feeding the fish! Every time Makina's small hand hurls a bit of bread into the pond, a loud splashing sound resonates from the surface of the water. Apparently someone stocked it with fish, and she's feeding them. Are you going to, like, fatten up the fish, catch them, cook them, and eat them, Makina? She's fattening them up to eat? Clawfish? Makina looks around the area rapidly, grabs a short tree branch line nearby, then leads over to the depths of the pond and begins poking into the water. <laughs> then we get the little crawfish here, just like, huh? What do you want with me? <laughs> Although I was puzzled there for a moment, it seems like she's trying to capture a, a crawfish that she spotted in the pond. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. 
Why are you trying to catch it? This looks risky. Given her character, it's obvious she'll be ta taking a face-first dive into the pond very soon if I just sit here. I approach Machina from behind and call out to her. <laughs> She's gonna freak out. Hey, watch out or you'll fall in that pond. <laughs> yep, knew it. I guess I shouldn't have called to her out of nowhere. Machina's hand slips off the ground in a stereotypical slapstick <laughs> pit pratfall. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Whoops. Swiftly reaching out to the floundering Machina, I firmly seize the collar of her school uniform and pull her back to safety. Wow. We have good reflexes, then, if we're able to pull her back that fast. What was that sound? <laughs> Dangled by the nape of her neck like a kitten, Machina lets out a feline cry. Like, oh no, is this going to be another case of, like, oh, this character's actually a cat? <laughs> You're light. Are you even 40 kilos? There isn't any difference in weight from the backpack I'm always carrying. Given it this weight and size, I could lug her a good 25 kilometers in a single day. Please don't. I mean, fattening up fish and then uh, then catching them and eating them, like, that's fine. It's just not something you normally do with, like, the school koi pond. <laughs> <laughs> Nya is the way a cat meow is spelled in Japanese. Uh, interesting. Oh, sorry. What's wrong with this girl, then? Well, um, newsflash, girls, that doesn't sound cute. I wasn't planning to call out to you, but it's better than letting you fall into the pond, isn't it? Oh, she, oh thank you. Uh, no need to thank me. I did the natural thing, given the circumstances. Yeah, um, you were the one who was causing her to fall in in the first place. Look at me, shamelessly doing the life-saving hero number, despite being in large part responsible for the problem in the first place. Yep. I might have the makings of an American politician. <laughs> okay, that's a good joke. <laughs> Machina gives a quick bow of thanks, and without another word, starts to run away from me yet again. Hey, hold it. Where do you think you're going? Do I find her voice annoying? I'm not a fan of Machina's voice, no. It's very anime-esque. Don't give me... Uh, or why are you running away from me? Yeah, her voice is a little... Not pitchy. Shrill? That's not necessarily the right word. Her voice grates on my ears a little bit, especially when she's loud. When she asks me point blank, it's not like I have any particular justification for detaining her here. That said, it's kind of unpleasant to be avoided this blatantly. At the very least, if there's a reason she's doing this, I want to know about it. I think I asked this before, but are you scared of me? If there's some reason why you're avoiding me, how about telling me? If possible, I'll try to address it. That's why I thought she was eight years old. She, she looks, sounds, and acts like an eight-year-old. Or like a six-year-old. Again, with the silent treatment. Deciding to pursue the conversation more patiently, I squat down to match my line of sight with Makina's. Do you remember my name? Kazami Yuji. She's better with names than I am. That's right, Yuji's fine. What? No, no, it's not. Okay, then call me what you want. Okay, not that. No. No. Oni? I have to say being called her big brother is a bit embarrassing on my end, but... Well, alright, no, nope, I would not, I would not put up with that. Hmm? This, that's gonna, this is gonna sound real bad when the others find out about this. When I turn around in response to the splashing sounds coming from the pond behind me, there are a number of fish gathered at the surface of the water, flapping their mouths in a demand for more food. It seems they've come to expect a handout when people stand near the pond. Makina, you still have breadcrumbs left? Not gonna thrust her hand into her skirt pocket and then rummages through its contents. No. As she talks, she pulls things out of her pockets one after the other. The items that emerge are mostly sweets like candy, chocolate, and chewing gum, along with an erratic selection of tools like nail clippers, rubber bands, and glue sticks. 
Although I've heard that women's purses are connected to the fourth dimension. <laughs> this girl's pockets seem to be connected to a garbage dump. <laughs> Truth. Purses are bottomless pits. Kazami means the fruit of the wind? Interesting. Makina carelessly rains down the rubbish that emerges on the ground around her. One after the other. What is this? I pick up a plastic container shaped like a large film canister. There's a label pasted on the side filled with numbers and symbols of uncertain meaning. <laughs> I'm not going to steal it or anything. Here, take it. When I hold out the case to her, Makina snatches it back instantly. I wasn't going to. I'm not going to sneak bites of other people's food at my age. <laughs> Her eyes just keep narrowing more and more. What the heck? No, Marty, I am not on her route. I haven't had a single decision to make yet in this entire visual novel. Also, I do not want to do her route. I want to do the Sachi route. Amine, huh? Oh, he's just talking about Amine. <laughs> Give me five! <laughs> I didn't, just saying the first name that popped into my head. I, it really was her? Guess she's got a surprisingly gluttonous side. <laughs> she's smart. She knows to bribe people with free food. Good is her word. Makina shoves some half-eaten bread under my face. Is she trying to fatten me up, too? <laughs> what? Uh-huh. No, I wasn't planning to eat it. I take the bread scraps from Makina, tear off some small pieces, and then throw them into the pond. The fish at the surface struggle like a pack of piranha for the food, messily gulping it all down. I wouldn't shoot someone for that, but I would make it very clear that I'm not answering to that. <laughs> nice appetite, huh? I thought these things were carp, but now that I get a closer look, they're actually goldfish? They're koi, I think. <laughs> Are you just putting random fish you can get into this pond and hope that they aren't, like, the prey of the other fish? <laughs> From a goldfish snatching game, huh? If these were originally goldfish from a scooping game, they're almost certainly the tiny kind that's sold as live food for carnivorous fish in pet shops. But... These fiends are huge! I thought those were gonna be co uh, koi. Fish generally can keep growing as long as they're alive, so the more you feed them, the bigger they'll get. What exactly have you been giving them, though? Hmm. Ah, I get it. You know, fish don't really know when they're full. They don't feel the pain the way we do either, so they'll eat as much as you give them, even if their stomachs are bulging out. The number one cause of death among aquarium fish is ingestion from being overfed. Indigestion. That's what it said in something I read when I was a kid, at least. Um... I think it was a magazine called Monthly Junior Science. Oh, no, you need to get highlights with Goofus, Goofus and Gallant. They mentioned it in some article about raising fish in <laughs> ozonated water. That face is a little weird on her. <laughs> it had articles on all sorts of things, not just fish, animals, space, whatever. Hey, we're bonding with her. My older sister was was a seriously dedicated reader. I'd pick up magazines like that when she was finished, although half of it went over my head. As I'm recalling the content for the, the science magazines I read back then, I suddenly remember something. Hey, Makina, you had some pickled squid in that pocket, didn't you? Oh, <laughs> you know, as you do. No, just take it out for now. Also, have anything we could use as stream? You also have the rubber band. Oh, you'll see. Receiving the squid from Makina, I firmly tie one end of the thread around it, and then knot the other end onto a tree branch that I picked up at random. Exactly. So now we... I toss the squid dangling by the thread into the pond. 
Around the area where I threw the squid, I can see the shape of the crawfish Machina had been poking at earlier. When I jiggle the squid in front of his face, within a matter of seconds, the crawfish extends his pincers and firmly seizes the bait. There. Hooked him. See that? Ugh. A little shrill. It's a crawfish, not a clawfish. You got the word wrong. As I dangle the uh, captured crustacean in front of her eyes, Machina stares at it with an expression of immense curiosity. Fishing rods are pretty cool. There must be a lot of edible aquatic plants or something in there. Crawfish turn red when they have abundant food. <laughs> Caught me a crawdad? I bet I catch chin hook. <laughs> they turn blue. What's worth going fishing? Why would the FBI be here? If you take a small newborn crawfish and continuously give it food like potatoes, radishes, or sardines that don't contain carotene, it'll turn blue in a month or so. Really? I didn't know that. I read it in a book when I was a kid, and ended up trying it out myself. There was some that ended up with a lot of violet spots or white flecks, but I remember getting a few that turned deep blue as well. Okay, then try to catch one yourself. I pull the captured crawfish off of the squid to return to the pond, and then hand the fishing pole to Machina. You know, it, it is occurring to me that, like, if the Machina route is not a romance route, and instead it's basically, like, we're her... I don't want to say honorary big brother, but we're kind of, like, the, the positive male influence in her life. Because, again, she seems very immature. That could actually be interesting. Experiencing new things is always worthwhile, so you might as well start by trying to catch one yourself. Yeah, Amine has not shown up yet. Don't fall into the pond, alright? Also, try to get the smallest one you can. I want Michiru to show back up. I'm not a huge fan of her, but she's super entertaining, so I actually like it when she's on screen. Taking the crude pole for me, Makina forcefully hurls the squid into the pond. Nice ripple effect. <laughs> What's with the background? I already told you, it's crawfish, not clawfish. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a problem then. Is that the issue here? I mean, I do remember pronouncing snail as smail back then when I was in elementary school for a while, but after my sister pointed it out to me, I stopped making that mistake. Didn't you have someone to point out that sort of mistake for you? Your mom, for instance? Oh, what? Oh, no. That's terrible. I see. There's no mother in the world who hates her child, was my mother's line. But by now I'm all too well aware that the world isn't that simple. I suppose there really are mothers who hate their children. And for those children, that can't be a topic they want to chat about with some stranger. An awkward attempt at consolation would backfire here. <laughs> Protect the Machina. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to let people bully her. But also, she's got to be a strong, independent woman who need no man, but can choose a man. Hmm? Me? Seems like I haven't quite gotten the hang of being called Oni-chan yet. Yeah, I would never get used to that. You serious? How am I nice? <laughs> Just wasn't interested enough to risk it. I stare steadily at Makina's small back, silhouetted against the pond. If you want to talk, I'll listen. Okay, well, if you're, like, a willful idiot, like, if you want to be that, that that's a bit of a problem. Don't they say that kids are cuter when they're a little dumb? Yeah, everyone's really weird. Can't say I've ever heard of anyone with that fierce of a reputation for being stupid before. Well, don't worry about it. There's nothing but idiots in my vicinity, including me. Aww. 
なるべく近寄らないようにしてたんです。<笑> I don't think Sunohara was like a willful idiot. I thought he was just an idiot because he was ignorant. This sounds like Makina is like willingly trying to be an idiot. It's like I said, I'm surrounded by idiots. If I went around hating people for something like that, I'd run out of my supply of hate real fast. Well, there certainly are people who can't hold together their fragile sense of self worth except by looking down on others. Even a few true idiots who take these emotions to the extreme, some dictators or cult leaders, and launch hunts against their inferiors. But why assume you'll be hated over something like that, anyway? That way of thinking seems counterproductive. Debase yourself by saying, I'm just an idiot, and you'll soon puff up many self styled geniuses of the world. <laughs> Okay, Amine might be like conventionally pretty, but her personality be stank. You don't want to get with a girl whose personality is stank. There's no point in standing around with your mouth open waiting for talent to fall from the sky. You make your own. Hmm. No matter what you're doing, the most essential thing is to not give up. Fail as many times as it takes. Keep trying persistently until you can call yourself average. That's actually legit good advice. Average is just fine. If you can collect a nice group of average level skills, that's already above average. You've created your own sort of talent. Being a hard worker is a talent in its own right, were my sister's words. True! And from that group of average skills, you can work to improve fervor on the things you think you're suited for. A person blessed with talent, in a manner of speaking, is just someone who found a path well suited to them early on. When you get down to it, people can accomplish nearly anything as long as they don't give up. Obvious, but it's true. On the other hand, guys who give up at the first setback will never get anything done. Yes! This is actually <laughs> Yuji dropping the truth bombs. You, There's no need to rush. You're still a kid. You've got time. Try out anything and everything. Struggle around as much as you want. I rest my hand on Makina's head with a gentle thump. It's at just the right height for this sort of thing. That's what school is for, right? This is actually a touching moment. At the very least, I think the principal wants this school to be that sort of a place, so you might as well throw out your chest and do as many stupid things as you want, with pride. Of course, if this girl ends up doing something truly dramatically stupid, the principal will be the one facing the music, so I'm probably overstepping my bounds just a bit here. <laughs> I don't think you want Yuji to speak at your university, because, yeah, he might actually be able to give some good advice, but then, during the Q&A, he might be asking for girls' measurement sizes, so... Why not? Being dumb is fine. Uh, I mean, you shouldn't try to be dumb. In the first place, guys who go around calling themselves geniuses are either weaklings with fragile egos, or jokers using the line to get a laugh. And even if you were some genius, that just makes it easy to mistake yourself for a perfect human and start slacking off. Hairs like that get passed by the tortoises of the world eventually. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I just wanted to try playing the nice guy for a bit. You shouldn't trust me that easily, got it? <laughs> I don't know why Sundere is a fan, it's completely illogical. <laughs> hmm, how to put this? I'm not sure I feel about being put in the same boat as that girl. Hmm? Makina! I think you've got a bite! No need to rush. Slowly pull it out of the water. <laughs> my ears. See? People can do anything if they try. So don't give up before you start, okay? Well, rip, cl rip crawfish. Okay, then you should go to Amine or Sachi and see if you can find an aquarium to raise it in. Make sure to only feed it stuff without carotene. Alright, see ya, Marty. Thanks for hopping in. Oh, you remembered. I put my hand on Makina's head and ruffled her hair around roughly. <laughs> Alright. Better get that crawfish in water while it's still in good shape. Don't overfeed it, okay? Mmm. 
Yeah, see you later. Makina, still clutching the crawfish, waves her hand uh, cheerfully and takes off at full speed toward the dorm. Thanks. Huh? I don't recall doing anything worthy of much gratitude. But regardless, hearing such a happy thanks feels kind of pleasant. Maybe it's because I was raised in an environment where such words were very rare. But I think being able to thank others so freely is also a sort of talent. It probably seems perfectly commonplace to her, so I'm sure she's not even conscious of that skill. I sort of get the feeling she may just be overlooking the talents she does have. Ah, I get it. I guess that what, that's what makes her an idiot. They say that idiots don't catch colds, but it's probably more accurate to say idiots don't realize when they've caught a cold. In the same way, because Makina's an idiot, she probably is oblivious to her own abilities. Hmm. Honestly, what a weird girl. True. But then again, weird people are rarely boring. Or so I think, basking in the peaceful, sluggish atmosphere Makina left in her wake. <laughs>